Control valve failure is a very famous issue while operating a process plant, whether this was in refineries, gas plants, petrochemicals, water treatment, or other chemical industries. This is because a control valve is an essential component that is existing abundantly in any process plant. Its failure shall have negative consequences on the operability and safety of the plant. Any plant will have control loops that use final control elements that adjust the flow based on the process parameter to be controlled. In order to adjust a process parameter, we will need a final control element. We will have a measuring device that will send a signal to the final control element to adjust the fluid flow based on the signal. Control valves represent the vast majority of final control elements. By changing the control valve opening, we can control the fluid flow, so we can finally reach the required set point of the controller. The control valve doesn't just act as a final control element, but also adjusts the system hydraulics. Here for example, the control valve acts to adjust the operating point in the pump performance curve, and shifts the system curve to intersect with the pump performance curve, so that we can get the operating point we need. If there is no control valve here, the pump will face the minimum resistance, which means pumping much more flow than expected, and may even cause the pump to work at the end of the curve, which is not a good operating condition for the pump in many cases. I have made a dedicated course for pump hydraulics, where it plots the pump performance curve against the system curve. It also shows how the control valve on the discharge affects the pump operating point. You can check it out in the description. In the second example, the control valve here doesn't just adjust the flow, but also the reactor pressure. The pressure here is a much more important factor to control, because it will directly affect the reactor conversion, which shall lead to an off-spec product. So here it is not just a matter of controlling the process against some disturbance, but it is more related to adjusting the system hydraulics. Still, the valves are working as a final control element, receiving a signal from the flow or the pressure controller in their control loop. So how the control valve is connected to the control loop? Control valves are equipped with actuators. Actuators move the valve stem upwards and downwards based on the signal received from the controller. Actuators are mostly pneumatic, which means that they drive power for the valve operation through pressurized air. This means that any plant would need an instrument air compressor, receiver, and piping header to supply air to all control valves in the plant. So what if, for any reason, the instrument air system fails? This means that there shall be no air supply to the valve, and the actuator won't work. The valve would be either totally open, or totally closed, or it stays in its last position. This means that we should be ready for this scenario. When the instrument air supply is cut, would it be safe that the valve is fully open, or that it shall be fully closed or that it stays at the last position? This should be determined case by case. In the same plant, we may have valves with a fail open action, others with a fail closed action, and sometimes failing in the last position. But at the end, we should ensure that the valve fail action shall be the fail safe position, which is the position that will be safer for the plant. But although air failure is the most common reason for control valve malfunctioning, there is also a probability of mechanical failure. So for example, if the valve stem was stuck open or closed, then this would mean that the air supply wouldn't help, and we won't get the valve at its fail safe position. So sometimes, we will even need external protection for the upstream or downstream equipment, to prevent any potential damage due to valve failure. So if we want to ensure that the plant shall not have any safety issue, if the control valve failed, we should consider the below. We should first make sure that instrument air failure won't create a safety issue, due to accidental opening, 
or closing of a control valve. So we should first choose the correct valve fail action, whether it can be a fail open, or fail closed, or fail in last position. But still there is a probability that the control valve stem is mechanically stuck in a position, where it can cause a safety issue. That's why we would need an external protection against valve mechanical failure. This can be through shutdown action, or through a pressure safety valve, that shall handle the fluid in case of control valve failure. So if the air supply was cut, the valve should be in fail safe position. This is a parameter that should be considered in the design phase. To choose the appropriate fail action, we should look at our system. Would it be more safe if the valve opens? Or if it was closed? Let's start with the minimum flow control, which is placed to operate the pump at a flow which is more than its minimum flow. When a pump works at less minimum flow, this can cause motor overload and damage to the pump. So we want to make sure the pump is well protected. If the air supply to minimum flow valve is cut, it would be better for the pump that the valve is at 100% opening than 0% opening. We would choose the fail action in this case to fail in the open position. But when we look at the capacity control, then the fail action would depend on the downstream process. For example if the pump is pumping the fluid to a tower and the control valve air supply was cut, if the valve was left at 100% opening, this may cause disturbance in the tower, such as flooding for example. So in this case, it would be better for the valve to be at 0% than to be at 100%. We would choose the fail action in this case to fail in the closed position. But what about pump working at minimum flow? Well, we have a minimum flow controller, and if the air supply was also cut, then it will fail in the open position. What if the downstream system won't get much affected by the loss of operation of the control valve? If we kept the flow, even if it is not exactly the required flow, would it help? This may be for example in off-site pumps that are pumping some feed to another unit or another plant. In this case, the valve can be in the fail last position. This means that, when the air supply to the valve is cut and its opening is 45%, the valve opening will still be the 45%. However, the fluid flowing will keep on pushing the plug either to the open position, or to the closed position. This means that after some time, the valve will be fully open or fully closed. This would be specified as fail last drift open, or fail last drift closed. Another example of fail open position can be in a water cooler, so if the instrument air was cut from the control valve controlling the water flow, we would need to ensure that the hot fluid will still be cooled. That's why we shall consider the valve to be fail open as this would be the fail safe position. However, if the fluid is heated by steam, then the case would be different. If the valve was left to be fail open, Overheating the fluid would be a safety issue in most cases. That's why in this case the valve would be fail closed. So we added the valve fail action, which shall reduce the risks if the air supply was cut. But what if the valve experienced mechanical failure? In this case, we would need another protection to protect our equipment. Suppose we have this vessel, which is operating at 3 barg. The bottom liquid from the vessel is then transferred to a tank, which is operating at atmospheric pressure. The pressure is dropped through a level control valve LVO1. So what if the valve mechanically stuck in the open position? This would mean that the vessel will be emptied from the liquid. After emptying the vessel from the liquid, the gas in the vessel starts flowing to the tank. This means that the pressure starts to rise which will cause overpressure in the tank. This can cause the welding between the tank shell and roof to fail, which shall lead to gas exposure to the atmosphere. This can cause a safety and environmental disaster. 
This is called gas blow by case. So in this case, we shall need to stop the fluid to flow once the liquid level in the vessel reaches the low low liquid level. Let's say it's 300 millimeters. This can be done by installing a level transmitter on the vessel that sends a signal to an on-off shutdown valve to close it once the liquid level is 300 millimeters. So the scheme shall look this way. But in many cases, depending on shutdown protection may not be enough. Depending on the criticality of the overpressure consequences, and the reliability of the instruments, or the emergency shutdown, ESD, system, which is usually studied in HAZAP and SIL analyzes, we may need another layer of protection. There is a higher level of protection to protect the system from control valve failure, which is to install a PRV, which would be a pressure relief valve, for liquid services, or PSV, a pressure safety valve for gas services. The safety valve shall be set at a certain pressure, and once it reaches that pressure, it shall open and the pressurized fluid is either sent to flare for gases, or to another downstream system for liquids. So if we shall need a PSV in our case, where the overpressure will be due to gas flowing to the tank, we shall send the gas to the flare. The PSV shall be sized to handle the flow rate when the valve is at its rated CV. So as we have seen, control valve failure should be well handled, during the project design, we need to consider the proper valve fail action when instrument air supply is cut. We should also consider how to protect our equipment and piping, when the valve stem is stuck at an undesirable position. If you'd like to know more about control valves, you can check out our course in the description related to control valve hydraulics, characteristics, and sizing. Have a nice day, and see you in another video.